another episode of Mixbus TV Ultimate Compression and Compressors Guide. In this video, the best and cheapest diode bridge compressors, both analog and plugins. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy and special discounts and offers on plugins, including the plugins that we are gonna see in this video, all the diode bridge compressors. And now you can also become a Mixbus TV member, helping me making more videos, better content, and keep the channel alive by clicking the join button down here. But most important, by doing that, you will have access to exclusive content like members only posts, videos, live chats, download to Pro Tools sessions and files, and even mix consultation by email or Skype with me. So if you wanna know more, click the join button down here and take a look. Let's get to the video. In this one, we cover the topology of diode bridge compressors, and because there are not so many out there, in one video, we are gonna do both the cheapest and the best hardware and plugins. I could not start this list in any other way other than mentioning one of my new favorite hardware compressors in general, which happens to be a diode bridge. It's here next to me is the Heritage Audio Successor. I was the first one to review in this compressor. It sounds absolutely amazing. If you wanna check out the dedicated video, I will link it down below. If you wanna know more about the general characteristics of diode bridge compressors, check out the first video in this series where we talk about all the topologies. The Heritage Successor is the perfect combination of vintage tone, like real vintage creamy tone, and modern functionalities. It has tones for days, a lot of thick and creamy color, yet it's super versatile because the super fast attack, the all variable release, the mix knob on board, 1.5 ratio up to limiting. This compressor is great for tracking, is amazing for mixing. It can be super snappy and aggressive, and yet it can do gentle compression. It has a ton of color because of the diode bridge topology, but also there is the output stage that you can control an additional color. The output stage is basically a 1073 output stage. The more you crank it, the more color you get. This compressor sounds absolutely great. I put this one at the top of the list because of course I have it, I got it. I absolutely love it, this is personal taste. I'm pretty sure it's the latest diode bridge compressor released on the market. It's super, super quiet and it's stereo. And number two, another behemoth of compressor. This one is the Chandler Zener Limiter. This is a great diode bridge compressor, very colored, very punchy. I had it for a while and loved it on drums and guitars, but you see this one very often in mastering rigs as a color alternative compressor to the more classic transparent mastering compressors. And there's a reason because of that. Of course, the Chandler Zener Limiter is a reissue, a recreation of the old Abbey Road. It was originally made to replace both the Fairchild and the EMI modified Altec RS-124 compressors. The result is a combination of these two monsters compressor, but from my experience, this one has more punch, more snappiness, and the saturation on it, it's just amazing. It has three modes the comp one, the more gentle compression curve, the limit, which is the most aggressive, and comp two, which is a combination of the two. It also has something that I absolutely loved when I had it, is the THD switch for saturation, and that was my secret weapon on electric guitars, not running any compression at all, just running the THD on them thickness and saturation were amazing. A very cool trick with this compressor on vocals, but on any mono source really, is to run one channel into the other and use the first one for compression and the second one in THD just for saturation. If you can afford this, give it a shot. And the third place, the Neve 2254. This one is the vintage unit that made basically diode bridge compressors so popular. Originally built by Rupert Neve by request of a big broadcasting company to replace the Pi compressor that was on the broadcasting consoles. That's why you see the odd square format. The unit sees two sections, the compressor and the limiter, and they do interact with each other. It has a thick and creamy color, very much like the successor, but it's of course more noisy because it's a vintage unit. But still, the Neve 2254 is a classic. If you can find one well-maintained and you can afford it, go for it. But if you can't and you still want that sound today, there are so many ratios and the next one is one, is the Neve 33609. This compressor was supposed to be the reissue of the 2254. It went through many revisions. Actually, there are four versions, C, J, JD, and N. 
of course the earlier versions are the most sought after and loved the newest one don't get that much love i didn't try them all well i actually did try them all but i never compared one to another the 33609 is still a great solid state diode bridge stereo unit definitely less color than say the successor or the old 2254 but still a great sounding compressor. One of the most common uses for the 33609 is on drums and groups because of the signal path and the combination of the compressor and the limiter. On the newer models, you get to get used to the release because the jumps between the various steps on the release are pretty big, so it can go from too fast or too slow very quickly, so you need to adjust and get used to it. Settings can be a little tricky, but you have a lot of versatility because of the interaction of the compressor and the limiter. So. 33609, check that out. I never personally tried the next one, but I'm very familiar with Rupert Neve Design gear because you know I've been using the 542s for a long time. Is the Neve 535, probably the only diode bridge compressor in 500 series, as far as I know. Uh, it has everything well packed in one unit, one slot, metering included. The attack and release are presets on this one. So the attack and release are not fully variable as in, for example, the successor. It has also a blend knob for onboard parallel, which is great that they include it in one slot. It's not cheap for being a mono unit in a 500 series, it's almost a thousand. Rupert Neve design gear is great. I, like I said, have experience with my tape emulators, so definitely check it out if you want a diode bridge and you use 500 series. Next one is the Buzz Audio DBC20. It came out some time ago and I remember because I wanted a diode bridge compressor and I was interested in that. Like I said, there are not many diode bridge compressor out there. So when one popped out here and there, it caught my attention. This one was one. Buzz Audio is another great manufacturer. They say this one is not a 2254 copy. Uh, but it's just the inspiration for the design. Unique to this compressor is the side chain that recreates the style of compression of the Fairchild where the ratio is increased with the deepening of the gain reduction. Again, somehow a parallel with the Zener limiter uh, combining elements from the Fairchild and put it in a diode bridge compressor. And now the cheapest diode bridge compressor on the market and still very cool is the Golden Age Comp 5x4 in 500 series. So forget what I said earlier when I said the Neve 535 was the only one. Uh, this little thing is packed with feature, fully variable attack and release, two auto modes, impedance option, all stepped controls, three sidechain filters and two air setting, and it's a class A signal path for less than $400. Now this on paper simply makes it a no brainer. And I love the diode bridge design, actually the 2254 design and a type of compression for a lot of things bass vocals and drums being my favorite and you know i do have both the comp 3a and the comp 2a from golden age audio and i absolutely love it i don't care how much the price is i brought these for several recording sessions and i prefer them to la2a respectively and 3a so to me that says a lot about golden age product i have two i absolutely love them i tried them and i kept them both i never tried this one in particular i know a couple of friends that have it and they're super happy with them and we are done with the analog diode bridge compressors let's get to the plugins because even here like i said before there are not so many choices so we can pack them all in one video. The first one is the digital recreation of one of the units that we just mentioned is the UAD Zener Limiter. UAD makes great stuff, we said it already, even if I don't have it myself, the Zener Limiter, I have probably more experience than with any other UAD plugin. I used it several times in other systems and it's very punchy and colored and I happen to know the hardware very well so I can tell is pretty much as expected. It's a great emulation of the hardware unit. It doesn't exactly behave the same a high settings meaning a high gain reduction levels and extreme saturation settings but that's always the biggest challenge for plugins against hardware still this is a really really good emulation if you want that sound for a lot less money and it's a bit less colored than the original unit but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing let's get to the next because i really like this one the waves v comp is basically a waves version of the old neve 2254 a very colored compressor that is all about gain staging it's fairly versatile for being such a particular compressor and 
uh, having that vintage behavior and tone. But levels, input levels in particular, are everything for this plugin to work properly and give you the sound that it's supposed to, and to set the compressor and the limit correctly. But the good thing about the V-Comp is it really has a vintage behavior vibe whatever you want to call it, uh, whether it's the curve, whether it's the release, whether it's the tone, it's definitely a unique sounding compressor. It's great for acoustic and it's great for rounding off the material, especially if you use the limiter, uh, use it conservatively because it can really chop off things, which is again, another very unique sound. So definitely check this one out. The third one is again, another UAD plugin and is another emulation of one of the machines that we've seen before is the 33609. And this one was modeled a long time ago. I remember being one of the very first UAD plugin, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if UAD remodeled it or revamped it like they did for uh, the 1176 and the LA2A and the Fairchild, but I remember back then the feedback on this plugin was pretty great. So even if they didn't, I assume uh, this one is definitely a good plugin. And again, I don't have UAD, I only heard about this one. I actually don't think I've never tried it, so I can't speak about the plugin itself, but again, we know UAD, we know the 33609, so this could be a good combination to try. And there is the last one because I said the choices are very limited and is another emulation of the 33609. This one is by AK Multimedia. I use this plugin from time to time. I don't have it myself, but I use it enough to remember. And I said it before, the 33609 can be tricky to set. And I remember this plugin not being that tricky. The release was pretty easy, as in it's not that jumpy as I found in the uh, one of the hardware units that I tried because of the... Uh, jumps between the different steps in the release were like maybe a bit, a bit too wide. Um, I didn't find this one on this plugin, so it was pretty pretty good sounding. I have to say though, it did not have that diode bridge classic color, creamy color that I expect from a diode bridge compressor. But overall, the AK Multimedia is a good plugin. You have the uh, sequence compression and limiter in one plugin in the 33609 style, and I think it's the only uh, native alternative to it. So check it out. To close this video and be fair, there are two more emulations of the 2254 that I've never tried like at all. One is the Lindell and one is the Nomad Factory British bundle, which I tried once but it was so long ago, I have no recollection, no memory of it. Nomad makes interesting stuff, so I'd give it a try if I had a chance. And this is it for this video. Let me know if you tried the missing one or if I missed some plugin or some hardware that you have, you used. Let me know how they compare. Let everybody know how they compare in the comment down below. Make sure you watch all the other videos in this series. If you like this one, please don't forget to leave a like. Follow Mixbus TV on Facebook and Instagram. And if you wanna check out what are the perks to becoming a Mixbus TV member, click the join button down there. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.